Good afternoon and welcome to the Better Market Street webinar. Uh, my name is Simon Bertrang. I'm the new project manager for Better Market Street for the San Francisco Department of Public Works. Uh, we are going to have a presentation today by a design team that uh, we're going to have a presentation today by the design team that came up with the uh, op three options for Better Market Street. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to alert you to how to um, interact with the webinar. On the right side, you'll see a red box with an arrow. That's how you access your control panel. If you're having trouble with the audio, there's also the option of either receiving audio through the computer speakers or via telephone. You can select either option on the right as well. Uh, for questions, there's a box underneath the word questions where you can type your questions. We will take questions throughout the presentation, but we will only be responding at the end. But feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, the work that you're going to see presented today is uh, the result of uh, work by many different uh, agencies in the city of San Francisco, as well as a large design team. Uh, we are at a critical milestone in the project. We have finished concept design, and that's what you're going to see today. Uh, we are about to enter environmental review. So this is the final round of public outreach uh, related to the project. Uh, and we've been in front of you twice before uh, for uh, different, at different critical milestones in the project, but this is the end of concept design. I'm going to hand it over to Jeff Riesum of Gale Architects, who will lead us through the presentation. <clears throat> Wonderful. So as Simon mentioned, my name is Jeff Riesum. Uh, we're the design team lead. Um, a firm named Gale Architects based in Copenhagen but with a lot of experience in North America uh, and throughout um, San Francisco as well as places like New York City and Los Angeles, Seattle, uh, etc. So um, in beginning to think about what we want to achieve with Market Street, we want to make sure that we're creating an enduring flexible street for all citizens. Everyone should feel both invited to spend time here. It should be a very inclusive place and we hope so, it, we hope in doing this it also becomes not only a more livable street but also um, a more livable city. We've, as Simon mentioned, we've had uh, two very good workshops already and we've received some, some good feedback where the public has been willing to support private auto access being limited uh, along Market Street. People support also this concept of a street life zone, which I'll be talking more about later, and are also actually willing to walk a bit further to make sure that to, to different transit stations. Already in the last couple of years that we've been working on this project, Market Street has changed dramatically. And the framework that we want to instill needs to be robust and flexible enough to continue to take on those changes while making sure that we improve mobility for all modes of transportation. So both for cyclists and pedestrians, also of course transit riders and motorists. Improving mobility for all and simultaneously really envisioning Market Street as a place as well. Um, we think that we can do both. It can be uh, a, a fantastic corridor for movement, but also a really inviting and wonderful place to spend time. So this sort of win-win situation, um, we've, we believe, can truly impact the quality of life for all San Franciscans. So many people, so many citizens of the city touch Market Street every day. And by making it better, we feel we elevate the entire quality of life of the city. So this idea of this win-win, as I mentioned, a new synergy between transportation and place, where the two mutually reinforce one another, and we take advantage of the fact that so many people use Market Street every day, and if we can invite them to spend some more time, well, now we're, we're making a really big 
positive impact. So as Simon mentioned, we're going to be talking today about three options. Um, all of them include substantial improvements to pedestrian conditions, the cycling facility, transit service, um, invitations for street life, various levels of uh, private car restrictions. Those elements are inherent in all of them, but we'll talk more about two options, one and two, which deal with just Market Street, but then also a third option, which uh, expands out to Mission Street, as well as including improvements, specific improvements along Market Street. So these elements we've put together as a bit of a kit of parts. We've packaged them into these options. But one thing for it's important for you all to keep in mind is that some of these improvements might be rearranged, mixed and paired in multiple configurations. And that's one thing we really want to have your feedback on. So in beginning, <clears throat> the urban context, um, we understand that Market Street is a grand street. It has an iconic character. And we need to be able to define that throughout the length. You should know at any point between Octavia and the Embarcadero when you're on Market Street. There should be a, um, a symbol of that unifying elements that tells you you're on the city's actually most important street. At the same time, though, we know this street traverses very, very different district characters. So we've been thinking about other layers of design that can be added on top of these one street uh, iconic elements that then let you know exactly a little bit more about well, what part of Market Street are you at and how can invitations along the street respond to the specific needs and demands of that local neighborhood. This entire corridor is activated also by plazas of many scales, places that are, are city scale destinations really where people from the entire city, you know, spend time on UN Plaza or, or Halliday or Yerba Buena. And we also know that there's district and local scale spaces which might attract activity and use from a little bit of a smaller area closer to them. Mechanics Plaza, um, a lot of the corporate squares and plazas along both of these corridors are utilized by people um, that, that live and work closer to that specific place. What we've done over the last year as well is expand uh, the thinking about the Market Street corridor to also include Mission Street. And we'll talk more about what that means as we go on. But in general, it allows us to think much more in, in a much more of a networked way to think about the different streets and alleys and spaces that connect these two corridors and the, and the interface between all the spaces, all the, all the key destinations, some of which we mentioned here that um, really contribute to how these two corridors function, how, how life along them is developed throughout the day, and how and why people really choose to come to some of these places. So one of the main hallmarks of our work at Gale is to begin any sort of design process with a, a keen understanding of how people are using streets and spaces. So we've gone in both along Market and Mission and actually measured how many pedestrians use the street throughout the course of the day. And this diagram here just indicates the total amount of pedestrians that you find along Market and Mission throughout the course of a weekday. We've done the same with cyclists to understand both you can see at the top of the slide here how cycling usage varies throughout the course of the day and also how the total amount of cyclists throughout the day, how many, th their quantity along different parts of market admission. We can see that some of the north-south connectors have as many or even more cyclists than, oops, than, uh, than Mission Street. And that Market Street is heavily, heavily cycled. We know that, of course, the the existing cycling infrastructure along Market and along some of these north-south corridors is of course having an impact and inviting cyclists uh, to use the street, whereas today there's not much uh, specific infrastructure along Mission. This analysis has also told us that the way that people move along Market Street actually changes quite a bit. So 
if we look at a specific hour between 5 to 6 p.m. and a weekday, we can see that towards the west part of the street, you maybe have more transit riders than pedestrians. Whereas when you get towards the east part of market, and especially in the, in the retail heart around 4th and 5th, the number of pedestrians outnumber other street users by two or three. So as I was indicating before with the districts, we know that Market Street is not just one street. It has a very, very different sort of neighborhood character and is also used very differently in terms of how people move along it from A to B. The same is true for Mission Street. Transit riders, transit ridership really actually drops off towards the eastern part of the street. Pedestrian usage goes up as we get closer to the water. And this is also giving us some clues about, well, how do we accommodate these existing needs and also be thinking about um, how things will change in the future. The Trans Bay Terminal down here will, of course, also impact this quite dramatically, and we're taking that into consideration. So that's a, a quick summary of, uh, of some of the analysis. There's a lot more that we've done that's influenced our thinking, but those are a bit of the highlights that have then guided us directly into these principles and design concepts. As I mentioned before, this notion of a, of a robust framework means that design solutions will, will change throughout the street and even be able to change over time. But we think that these guiding principles can actually be applied to pretty much any design solution as it's developed um, over the next couple years. The first one has to deal with street user families. We actually think that cyclists and pedestrians belong much more in the same category. And we'll talk more about that as we go on. Also, the transit experience, this door-to-door -door idea of the comfortable and convenient conditions for planning your trip, for waiting for transit, that all needs to be improved and really thought about, uh, as well as things like travel time and travel speeds. Finally, this notion of Market Street as an urban boulevard, a place where, uh, as I mentioned before, you actually go to spend time and where it's more of an idea of leisurely promenading, um, even maybe slowly moving from, from place to place while still allowing for that more hectic type, type of um, need to move from A to B quickly. We want to sort of change the vibe along the street to one that accommodates both and more of this urban boulevard type of, uh, type of feeling. So if we go through each one of those principles, we can say that here, looking at best practice from around the world, like in this case from Copenhagen, there's ways that we can treat cycle track treatments and the, and the pedestrian throughway to prioritize pedestrians and also be thinking of cyclists and pedestrians as part of this same family. You'll see here that design has actually helped the coexistence of these two user groups who are sometimes perhaps at odds, but here, um, able to coexist much more harmoniously. And this is just a, a quick example of how that might manifest itself um, along Market Street, where we understand everyone is a pedestrian at some part of their journey, whether they be a transit rider, a cyclist, a motorist. At some point, you're walking. The next principle has to do with what I mentioned about is this transit experience. So. Here we're thinking a lot about how um, improved conditions for waiting, maybe additional coverage, um, places to sit, where your waiting experience is interacted, is where your waiting experience can also be part of um, everyday public life along the street, where you can wait, but also shop or meet or interact with other people. And here's just uh, an idea of how that might uh, work with that principle, how that might be applied along Market Street. So this final one uh, about an urban boulevard, and that's really about creating invitations along the street. Some might be playful and temporary like this one, or maybe more permanent um, and more functional. But this idea of, of the street as a place and how we can invite for people to spend time that otherwise might pass through is definitely a, a, a key theme of all of our work up to this point. So here we think we can get this synergy between transport and place. And actually, as we begin to expand our thinking to also include
food mission, we think that synergy can move beyond Market Street. So as we think about how market and mission impact and complement one another, we can see that a complementary relationship can really be improved and enhanced, where transit riders might be consolidated on market and cyclists are invited even more so on Mission Street. So with that type of thinking, we know that Mission Street especially passes through a lot of side streets and, and alleyways. And again, looking at best practice, we can see how we can maybe prioritize movement along Mission, both with things like continuous sidewalks, uh, continuous bicycle, bicycle tracks, where we can still really improve and upgrade some of the small alleyways that connect market and Mission through car restrictions and improved surface material. But understanding that, of course, things like ground floor functions, functions are really important to establish this relationship. So this idea of network and hierarchy comes together, and we can begin to see a sort of a fine grain uh, network that emerges where we have primary and secondary and tertiary linkages, each serving their own purpose, but all contributing to this notion of a synergistic and complementary relationship between these very important corridors. Again, we can look to best practice about how you can actually activate some of these alleys from places like Melbourne, where here areas that it almost seemed inconceivable could be attractive and welcoming for people can actually be transformed and, and again, form part of that network. So this is just a little bit more explicitly talking about how street life can be activated along, along Mission Street. Here you see diagrammatically some of those continuous sidewalks and where some of the side streets and plazas have a chance to spill out uh, into the street, but where we really maintain this at least a 15-foot pedestrian throughway along the entire length of Mission Street. The Market Street concept for street life um, is a bit different, still in the same spirit of transit and place, but here the conditions uh, along Market are a bit different. We have much wider sidewalks and the opportunity actually to have what we're calling the street life zone all along the length of the street. This zone organizes street furniture and enhances the entire street layout and gives us a chance to where we have special opportunities to really expand that zone out to what we're calling hubs, where more of a small public space might be able to be formed. So that's what uh, the zone could look like. And as you see here, it's more, it's actually an entire high performance zone. So it's more than just street life. It's also able to incorporate elements like stormwater treatment, uh, bicycle parking facilities, seating opportunities, thought of um, as, as flexible and robust as possible, as I mentioned from the beginning. And these hubs, like we were talking about, they are places where, whoops, there are places where even more pools of activity can be consolidated, um, where the, the zone can be expanded a bit more. We're always continuing that 15-foot wide pedestrian zone, but here you have opportunities for greater uh, synergy and interaction between ground, neighboring ground floor uses, uh, again, transit stop facilities, and an expanded but still quite small uh, public space to activate the street. And here's how one of those hubs might look like um, in the mid-market district. Again, you see that these places look quite different. It's here, especially in the, uh, in the street life zone, that we can accentuate that district character. So, you know, the civic center zone or hub would look quite different than the mid-market hub. With this thinking about what we want to change and improve, we of course also recognize that there's a whole lot of fantastic historical character along the street that we need to maintain and preserve. So historical elements will, will be maintained as much as possible, things like the Path of Gold, um, are something that we need to make sure that we respect. We also know that right now the, the condition of the street trees and the canopy here are not in the best condition. So part of this street life zone concept is to create conditions where street trees can really thrive and grow and, and create that canopy that's more conducive to um, 
not only better air quality, but better conditions in terms of human scale, sun and shading. Um, the street trees will be a key element of the future market street. Um, street furnishings, we think we can declutter the street a whole lot. So take out the non-essential uh, and really unused items like a lot of the newspaper stands. Um, keep th some things that work well or have a historical character. But again, be thinking about um, street furnishings in terms of how we declutter and really um, streamline the appearance of the street. Transit shelters, we think we can do more here. Um, again, looking to some best practice about how pleasant, um, pleasant materials and contemporary design can provide cover and shelter, places to sit and rest, and also things like transit information, um, updates about when the next bus will be arriving. And here is a idea of how those concepts could be applied um, to Market Street in particular, where again you really get that idea that we're able to integrate waiting for, for transit with all the other opportunities for street life along the street and promoting that synergy that I've been talking about. A key element, of course, as I indicated, are some of these plazas um, along, the, along the street. We've taken it upon ourselves to think about some concepts for two main plazas. The first is UN, where, of course, we know there's already this strong civic access and, and function and proximity to the capital. Um, and we think that we can maintain a lot of the, uh, a lot of the shape, really, of, of this square. Um, but change the way that people are invited to spend time here, maintaining the civic and democratic core, but improving things for, uh, for people, providing new opportunities um, for a wide variety of people to spend time, coexist, um, partake in all sorts of different activities. And here's just a few uh, images of how that might uh, look, how we can maybe activate some of the large, large spaces there with uh, light pavilion-like structures, have a good combination of seats that you have to pay for next to seats that are free, things that, again, really promote this type of synergy we've been talking about. Halliday Plaza, also, of course, um, a key location. Uh, right now, this sunken plaza um, is difficult to activate, uh, doesn't necessarily really utilize this uh, you know, incredibly precious real estate and area at this part of the city. And of course also it has an incredibly important street edge. It's um, really high, highly visible from across from the Westfield Mall and here at the Powell uh, Street cable car turnaround. So the plans for this uh, Halliday Plaza hope to accentuate some of that vibrant street edge and that uh, good sun sun conditions and microclimate, but we're actually suggesting that you could fill in the sunken portion, uh, bring up some of the activities and functions that are down below grade now, up to grade, and again make a combination of pay for seating and free seating, opportunities for all sorts of temporary and more permanent uh, use of the, uh, of the square. And here's just a, an idea of what that might look like. So, of course, a key aspect of um, anything that we do uh, along market and mission has to, deal with, has to deal with planned transit improvements. Throughout the entire corridor and all options, we're talking about colored transit-only lanes. So that would be the center two lanes that would be dedicated to transit only. All boarding islands would be upgraded and improved to, to be wider and longer so that they meet uh, American Disabilities Act um, standards in terms of width and length and uh, accessibility. We mentioned before already updating the transit shelters to make them more attractive and functional. Um, traffic signal improvements can also be used to uh, improve transit speed and reliability. And this is all thought of in terms of, again, these options of how um, bus stop distances and widths, which I'll talk a little bit more about here, might be able to um, be changed over time. So what we're, what we're looking at is two different options for revised spacing and service. You can see here the existing 
transit stops now are separated by, you know, 800 feet or 1,000 feet at different, uh, at different points. And the enhanced would consolidate some of those stops, in increasing the distances between stops by 20 or 30 percent. But again, being able to really streamline usage and improve uh, speeds and reliability while still maintaining their proximity to main, um, you know, Muni and BART stops as much as possible. The rapid option would consolidate even more, would in some cases mean a doubling of the distance between the, uh, between the stops, but again coordinating with BART and Muni, and as much as possible the um, reserving the, the more local service, uh, keeping it at the curbside stops. And we have um, Andrew Lee from SFMTA here as well that could answer some more details, especially about some of these transit stop spacings. Um, <clears throat> we know again that in, in thinking about this entire transit experience, we know things like um, ticket vending machines where you pay before you board, making sure that, uh, that those transit only lanes are respected. Uh, with through things like uh, overhead signs and even maybe physical barriers as shown here to make sure that um, transit only laws are are respected are also under consideration in terms of the transit improvements so here you can see uh, a little bit more detail about how all these things come together um, here along Market Street between between first and second here you see option one at the top and option two below. I'll be talking about these in a little bit more detail, but this is to give you an overview. So if we zoom in, uh, and, and this is option two, which includes a dedicated cycle track, you see some of the things that I've been talking about. Here we have the red dotted line shows the existing curb. There we go. Shows the existing curb, and so at some places, we're pulling, uh, pulling the curb back to accommodate space for this dedicated cycle track. Um, here you see a street life hub situated between two BART portals. Here in the street life zone, opportunities for things like uh, bicycle parking. Also in this option, there's um, different options for consideration in terms of how curbside boarding transit shelters, where you could stop, uh, sorry, wait here in the transit shelter and then cross over uh, the cycle track on some sort of um, raised paving to get you easily and comfortably to a, an, a small island here where you can board in a light. Uh, again, alerting cyclists that are coming along this way through bumps in the track or through, again, some sort of raised element, alerting them to the fact that here is a transit stop and some pedestrians are going to need to be crossing. When we look at Mission Street, sorry, I'll go back just a second. Two more things to point out here. Here you can see the, the center lanes. These are transit only throughout. And that a lot of sidewalk conditions have been improved as much as possible. So we're shortened crossings where we can. And all throughout the entire street made, made sure that we keep this 15-foot through width for pedestrians to allow for comfortable movement and also for uh, actually hopefully increased pedestrian volume over time. So then talking about Mission Street, um, this is that third option. Here we would have an opportunity for, here you can see a, again, a dedicated cycle track. Here it's um, at grade, so at the current street level, but with a buffer separating vehicles from cyclists, here's that buffer here, about four foot wide buffer, um, six to seven foot cycle track that would move through the street like this. Opportunities again for the sidewalk to continuously at the same level cross over uh, side, side alleyways so that if you're in a wheelchair or a pram, you, can cro you don't have to negotiate a curb. You can continue walking just straight across. Cycle track as well would be uh, prioritized at, at some of those crossings.
crossings or have an opportunity for, for new mid-block crossings where these um, alleyways that are, again, we're seeing more use and more interest in them, how they can be integrated in this network that connects market and mission. Throughout um, the Mission Street plan, there would still be, along a lot of blocks, still um, parking provision, uh, but it would probably mean a 30% or so reduction in the curbside parking that's found along Mission Street. Now a key thing to think about in terms of how Mission and Market would work together is the Mission Street option would mean that all the buses that are currently on Mission Street would be moved to Market. So the 14 and the 14L, um, Sam Trans, all those buses would move to Market Street and that would mean then that any Mission Street solution is also paired with a Market Street option. So right now we're putting this together with um, Market Street option one. Um, but again, this, this is a kit of parts that can be some, somewhat rearranged and, and mixed and matched. So here you see how these two options, Market Street option one and Mission Street, how they would each, uh, each work. Here in the shared lane option, um, option one, you see that improvements have been made at the pinch points. So where cyclists and buses need to share uh, a lane, these lanes are about two or three foot wider than they are today. Still having um, these wider boarding islands that I mentioned. And, and here you can see street life zone taking shape, again maintaining those 15 foot wide sidewalk widths. Here you have um, a Mission Street section where you can more clearly see that six and a half or seven foot cycle track, uh, a nice four foot buffer in between parked cars and, um, and the cycle track. So this means that cyclists really have a quite comfortable and protected um, path separated by moving vehicles which would be in the center two lanes. So essentially what this Mission Street option does is it takes two of those transit lanes that are there right now and repurposes them into this cycle track. And again, we can do that because um, the buses are moving up to Market Street. Here are um, a bit more detail about how that cycle track would, would play out. Here the Market Street track um, would be separated with two vertical separators. So here you see a curb. Uh, between the street and the, uh, and the track, and again another small curb, two or three inches between the sidewalk and the, um, and the cycle track. So that would be similar to option two along market. And here's some inspiration for how Mission Street could look. Again, here you're at street level throughout, but there's different forms of separation here in the form of a buffer, some bulb out here, all bulb outs here that make crossing the street um, a little bit shorter and again protect cyclists from ongoing vehicles. A key thing to point out here about the Mission Street option is because the buses would be moved to market, here we could achieve what's called a green wave where we could actually time the, the signals to correspond to about a 14 mile per hour um, speed. If you're a cyclist moving at 14 miles an hour, you can count on hitting every green signal along the length of Mission Street, which again is a quite a, a comfortable and convenient uh, perk of, um, of some sort of cycling facility on Mission. We would try to, uh, on Market Street, you know, make, that, make considerations for that average speed of about 12 miles per hour, but it would be very difficult to provide a green wave given all the different signaling considerations that have to happen there with transit. So here again, you see some, some more details about how the Market Street um, option one can work. Here option two, here you see these two dedicated uh, transit lanes, the cycle track, and this gives you a little bit of an indication. Here we would have a rolled curb, it's called, so you still allow for paratransit or delivery vehicles to easily come up uh, on top of the bicycle track and access uh, the sidewalk when they need to, but still simultaneously creating that buffer for cyclists. And here's just a um, 
a mission street rendering to give you an idea what that might look like. So that's pretty much it. Um, I think we'll have Kelly here to describe a little bit more about how to provide input. Hi, this is Kelly Rednick, Assistant Project Manager for the Better Market Street Project. Um, you can go to our website at bettermarketstreetsf.org. Um, later today, we'll have all of our presentation materials that we showed last night at the public workshop and that we will show on Saturday, July 20th at 10 a.m. Uh, at the main library. All those workshop materials will be online this afternoon and you'll be able to take the full survey um, online as well. Um, that survey will be the SurveyMonkey uh, link you see there, but you'll find it also at our website at bettermarketstreetsf.org. We hope you'll come out and tell your friends to come out to the workshop on Saturday, July 20th at 10 a.m. at the main library at 100 Larkin Street. And now we'll be um, answering your questions. You'll uh, want to type them into the question box you see on your screen there. And um, we have Andrew Lee from the MTA and Neil Hershoey from the planning department and um, Jeff as well to answer your questions. Uh, hi there. <clears throat> My name is Chris Colwick. I'm with Circle Point, part of the project team. And I'll be facilitating the question and answer period. Um, we've already gotten about uh, a dozen or so questions. And we'll do our best to get through all of them today in the remaining 20 or 30 minutes that we have. We're, I think we're all available to go a little bit over 1 o'clock today. Um, we're going to try to group these by topic. Um, and as I said, we've already gotten a couple, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the big picture questions that's been raised by a couple of attendees is the idea of converting mission and market into one-way streets. Uh, so um, I think that's the first question we'll talk about is what, what has been considered uh, about doing that and what, if any, are the challenges around that? Hi, this is Andrew with the MTA. The one-way option was something that the project team considered when we were doing our feasibility study. And there are some benefits and also some drawbacks to that option. Uh, the benefits for one-way traffic is that you can facilitate a lot of movement, as you can tell from some of the other one-way streets in the SOMA grid. Uh, the drawbacks, however, are that it's a lot of traffic to cross as a pedestrian. It's not a particularly comfortable experience. Uh, if you're on a bike uh, and there are five or so lanes of traffic next to you, uh, it can make for a pretty intimidating experience. Some of the other limitations that we have for the system are that we have the F-line tracks already in the middle of Market Street, and that system, uh, along with the overhead wires uh, that the, the uh, trolley coaches run along, are uh, some uh, hardware that is very hard to move um, and, and hard to uh, uh, replace. So um, those are some constraints that exist for the system. Uh, and along those lines, Mission Street and, and Market Street have uh, some unique characteristics. Uh, Market Street is a, a destination for many transit riders, and so to create a one-way couplet uh, would change the travel patterns, uh, some of the transfer patterns uh, for some of the trips uh, along these corridors. Uh, great, thanks, Andrew. Maybe uh, following on that, we have a we've gotten a couple questions about the idea of stop consolidation. Um, uh, there's concerns raised about uh, persons with disability and the added distance to travel between stops. So, Andrew, maybe you could also uh, respond to those concerns and how they'll be addressed moving the project forward. Under both options, we are looking at reducing the number of stops from their existing pattern of about one stop every single block, and that's roughly 800 feet uh, to around one and a half block spacing. So that would add around 400 feet more uh, distance between stops. Uh, this is closer to uh, what Muni is trying to, to work towards with uh, an ideal stop spacing pattern. And there's several benefits uh, that come out of this. With fewer stops, it helps with the speed and the reliability of the system. 
uh, so that there's less acceleration and deceleration and dwell time at, at each stop. It just helps the, the buses progress uh, when we can make a lot of movements um, uh, in, in a consolidated area. And then under both options, uh, we would have a, a one and a half block spacing at the curb side. So under the local enhanced option, both the center and the curbside stops have roughly one and a half block spacing. Under the rapid option, the center stops are at two to three block spacing, and that's for the limited lines. But under the curbside stops, they would still be spaced at about one and a half blocks, and that would be servicing the limited stops, or excuse me, would be servicing the local service. And the local and limited service would stop at common stops when we're near BART and Muni Metro portals, so that way a person wanting to transfer between different lines can do so without having to walk very far. Uh, two, two maybe uh, quick questions also related to transit. Um, one is just what, what aspects of transit um, are included? I think primarily the question relates to is this, is this focused on surface transit only and what sort of parameters are there around the BART portals? And then the second question relates to considerations around parades or emergency vehicle access, particularly if uh, all transit is moved to market under option three. With regard to the BART portals, BART has a study ongoing uh, that's looking at redesigning their, their uh, portal design. And the Better Market Street team is in coordination with BART, uh, but uh, in more of a support role. With regard to emergency access and related to that paratransit access and taxi access, we're uh, focused on preserving uh, the access to Market Street under all scenarios. For special events, uh, a lot of times Mission Street becomes the overflow facility uh, where buses have to divert uh, whenever there's a parade or um, other street festival. And the design for Mission Street will preserve the opportunities for buses to run along Mission Streets. So there will still be places uh, where temporary stops can be accommodated. The overhead wires on Mission Street will remain uh, to uh, accommodate these uh, special events. Great. Thanks, Andrew. We'll give you a rest for a minute there. Um, one of the common themes that always comes up uh, relates to the quality of life or the general quality of the experience of being uh, on Market Street as a public space. And there are often questions raised about um, the prevalence of homelessness, uh, crime, um, and public sanitation, and how those issues can be addressed with the plan that's being proposed um, and how we'll be moving forward. So I'll pass this to Neil. Thank you. This is a topic that we've thought long and very, very hard about. And I think there's some important points there. Within the Better Market Street, there's obviously constraints about what we can do. That said, I think we're at a point where the city as a team, from the mayor's office down through the agencies, are putting forth an unprecedented level of coordination and effort to help address the quality of life issues not just along Market Street, but um, throughout the city. And so I think there are changes already on the ground, and there will be more. And when it comes to you know, affordability of housing and the quality of the housing, um, those are obviously issues that are beyond the Market Street scope. But in terms of the public space, what we, the goals that we have set and what we're aspiring to is to build off some of the successes that we've already seen. For example, in UN Plaza and the introduction of the, the farmers markets and the off-the-grid uh, lunchtime events and similar efforts, what we've been able to do is to really expand the number of users who can happily coexist and, and use a space very harmoniously at the same time. And I think that really needs to be our goal and that we're looking at expanding the diversity of people who, who can use and feel comfortable along Market Street. Now that said, there's not going to be one solution for every single block. And 
uh, is not going to be the same solution for every single block. And I think we'll probably roll out some of the public realm improvements in phases and very, very consciously and looking towards make sure that it's, it's, it's a success and it avoids some of the pitfalls of some of the efforts we've had before, but then not stepping away from the ultimate goal at some point in the future of making Market Street an inviting place for all people to come. That means opportunities to sit and relax and to, and to enjoy the urban environment and recognizing and not being naive about some of the challenges along the way. Uh, so along a similar line with regards to quality of life and experience on the street, uh, a couple of questions have been raised about the uh, effect of uh, the very windy sections along both Mission and Market, as well as uh, shadows and shade. Um, how are those particular aspects being considered? So this is uh, Jeff again. <clears throat> so what we've tried to do is the locations where we've suggested uh, street life hubs where we really see an opportunity for people to spend time and uh, enjoy the life of the street. We've definitely taken microclimate into consideration there. So we're looking for places where uh, you can be protected from the wind, where the sun hits the ground. Uh, so that's really incorporated uh, into our thinking and also been thinking about ways where, you know, how can we cleverly use furnishings, bus shelters, other types of elements like that in the street life zone to also really enhance that microclimate. So to shield from the wind where necessary um, and to accentuate those those sunny spots. So it's beyond the the scope of this project to talk a lot about you know heights and shapes of buildings. So what we've done is just work to provide those invitations where the microclimate already um, is good and where, where we think we can where we'll, we'll remain that way here in the coming years. Uh, great. Um, uh, weaving in a couple of different issues and, and trying to combine a couple questions that have come up. Uh, there's a question about implementing the cycle track um, and how that will interact with uh, both loading uh, for merchants along both market and mission, but also um, if there is a, a, a big c concern or pushback from merchants with regards to the cycle track or moving of loading or changes to the bus stop location, uh, how do we anticipate um, moving forward with those types of issues uh, to make sure that all interested parties have had a chance to participate and, and are comfortable with the proposal that's on the table that's moving into environmental review. Hi, this is Andrew again. A couple things about the loading. Uh, we, I invite you to come out to our workshop on Saturday to take a closer look at the conceptual drawings that we've prepared and there you can get a closer look at how certain segments of the street are laid out. Uh, on most blocks, uh, as they're drawn, we have a loading zone uh, on each side of the street uh, for every single block. Um, and that's a primary concern for this project to accommodate the loading not only for commercial deliveries but also for uh, disabled access uh, at critical points, uh, particularly uh, BART portals uh, and uh, elevators. If uh, you have particular concerns uh, about certain uh, access uh, at a particular location, uh, once again, I invite you to submit your comments via the online survey or to come out to the workshop and uh, give us your feedback. Uh, the project team has been reaching out to stakeholder groups uh, as part of our, our targeted outreach, and uh, hopefully uh, you can come out to some of those meetings. Uh, please check the bettermarketstreetsf.org website uh, if you have a request for the project team to give a briefing uh, to your particular group. Okay, great. Um, I have a couple of sort of just one-off questions here. One is related to Hallity Plaza. Um, if that will still remain the location for the farmer's market. This is Neil from the planning department. So the, the Better Market Street 
proposal for Holiday Plaza is really to increase the flexibility of, of the space so it can be used in, in more ways. And so it's completely consistent with it being used as a farmer's market. We are not prescribing what should or should not happen there. And so there's no plans to cancel the farmer's market or to, to move it or to change it or do anything else. But it's actually just to provide a much higher quality, more inviting canvas for things like farmers markets and other events to, to happen there. And so the Better Market Street project is not, um, has not weighed in on, on locations of farmers market, for example, at Holiday Plaza. Uh, great. Um, on a slightly separate topic, um, there's been some questions about how uh, street furniture and how the trees will be selected. Um, with the trees in particular, it's related to the uh, impact of invasive roots on the sewer system. Are those types of considerations being factored in, and um, how, are, how ultimately do you anticipate making the determination for the uh, street furniture and, and other types of um, amenities? So this is Neil from the Planning Department. We are at the point of where we have some preliminary ideas of what the appropriate street tree species um, could be. We worked with the city arborist and uh, and as well as the consultant on 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 the project to to develop that. And but we're not at the point where we're selecting it. I think what we have agreed upon is that in the past 40 years, there's been a huge improvement in um, understanding and technology about how to plant trees in urban environments that really provide a much healthier and more robust urban forest and that that would be implemented regardless of which tree species we, we, we end up choosing but clearly we're going to be very very careful there's a tremendous amount of very expensive infrastructure under the ground um, both public and private that we need to be very considerate of and not threaten and so whenever we design um, the, the, the tree trenches that that be taken into consideration but we're still, it's too, still too early to say which species it's going to be. And so that conversation will continue through our environmental review and design phase um, the next two years and as we head into the final, final design. So there will be more opportunities to get down to that level of detail. And in terms of the street furniture, the, um, the ideas are very preliminary at the moment. The, um, we imagine that there's going to be some sort of common uh, language for, for the street furniture. There will be a market street bench, for example, but that there will be elements of all the street furniture that can be, let's say, swapped out. And this is an effort to bring some level of distinctiveness to each of the neighborhoods and that there may be an opportunity for an artist to do a panel on, on one of the benches or one of the standing tables and that there be some level of customizability to help accentuate um, district character. Great. Uh, back to, I guess, transit a little bit. Um, one of the questions relates to the fact of the option three having uh, bike facilities on both market and mission. And uh, the question relates to sort of how that uh, determination came about and, uh, and is there um, sort of overlap by having two corridors one block apart having bicycle facilities? So in terms of the overlap of bicycle facilities, uh, what we really identify between market and mission is there's opportunities to provide different kinds of bicycle facilities. Uh, the Market Street Cycle Track is a uh, vertically separated facility that brings you close to the street life uh, and gives you opportunities to stop and interact. And the Mission Street alternative gives you slightly more of a horizontal buffer. Uh, and it's also a slightly wider separated facility uh, so that it may appeal to a different kind of user group. Um, with regards to how this came about, um, looking at some of the, uh, the, the traffic and the, the walking volume slides uh, that Jeff presented, we're asking a lot out of Market Street um, as is right now. There's, uh, it's our transit backbone. It's uh, become our bicycle backbone. It's one of our primary pedestrian corridors. And option three came about because 
we wanted to see whether we could spread out some of this demand in a efficient way that prioritizes the existing uses and the existing users, uh, but also uh, creates more of a network type design that also accounts for anticipated growth into the future. Uh, great. Uh, a couple of questions around auto traffic. Um, one of the early questions related to the fact that um, auto conflicts, particularly between pedestrians, is quite a problem now uh, with auto drivers running red lights, blocking pedestrian crosswalks. Um, two intersections actually noted Market in Van Ness and Market in Hyde. And I'm wondering how those concerns are being addressed and incorporated into the proposals. So I will invite you again to come out to the Saturday workshop if you'd like to take a closer look at some of the conceptual drawings for the study segments on Market Street. Uh, under all of these options, there are improvements to the intersections. Some of these intersections will get uh, narrowed uh, to eliminate some of the slip lanes for the, uh, for the diagonal intersecting streets so that pedestrians have a shorter distance to cross and uh, will no longer have to make a, a two-stage crossing. Uh, some of these locations uh, will have auto restrictions. Uh, there are three levels of auto restrictions under each option. Uh, and these are all under consideration uh, based on the level of bicycle facility provided and also the uh, transit demand uh, under each option as well. So uh, cross traffic is a primary concern for this project. Uh, we want to make sure that traffic operates uh, smoothly, but also within the greater context that this is a street for everyone and that um, traffic also needs to be mindful of pedestrians and transit and bicyclists. There's a question about um, where there are auto restrictions. How does that affect taxis or um, commuter buses, private buses? So the three level of automobile restrictions uh, all have exceptions for taxis. So taxis will be allowed on Market Street as they are now. Uh, that goes also for shuttle buses and also for paratransit vehicles. So they will always be allowed to access Market Street. And we are trying to include in our design accommodations uh, through loading zones and uh, other uh, loading cutouts for uh, uses that need access. Uh, great. So uh, just wanted to check in, time check. It's 1 o'clock. Uh, we're all available for a few more minutes to take a couple of last questions. Um, I believe we've done our best to capture all of the themes that were raised and the questions that have been submitted so far. Uh, I would encourage those of you still on to um, view the more detailed exhibits and information that will be posted on the website this afternoon. Please take the survey as well so that we can incorporate your feedback into the process at this point as we move into the environmental review. And uh, you can also submit comments through the website. And we're looking forward to beginning the environmental review process and drilling down into these many of these details and questions that have been raised so that we can answer your questions and provide those in the form of the environmental document. Um, Kelly, maybe I can ask you to just give a quick uh, schedule overview so people kind of know what's coming in the next year or two. Uh, and then another question that came in was uh, regards funding for the project and if the, the project will require um, a bond or how we anticipate funding the work uh, down the road. So we are um, just finishing up the conceptual design or this conceptual planning phase with our conceptual three uh, options and we will start um, the environmental phase which will last for about two years. It's, it's estimated to last for two years. We're not into it yet so we don't know that for sure but that's the estimate. Um, the funding will come from multiple sources. Um, some of them will be uh, grant funding. We're also looking for um, some, for the plazas, we are looking for some partnerships, some public-private pi partnership funding. Um, for the street itself, it'll be uh, probably federal funds, state funds, um, some city 
funds, bonds, and um, it, it, it's not, it, we're not at the place in the project yet that we know exactly where the money is coming from. So I think we're going to wrap up, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, be sure to visit the website, bettermarketstreetsf.org, to see the, the exhibits from the workshops. And please uh, join us and tell your friends to come join us on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at the Public Library for uh, this presentation uh, and a lot more information. You can get a lot more detail on Saturday morning if you come and see us then. Thanks a lot for joining us. The organizer.